Okay. Oh, eighth graders. Um, I wanted to give you a little demonstration about the different ways you can use watercolors, okay? So it's not just, you know, dip your, your paintbrush in water and go. There's actually different ways of doing watercolor that will work very well for the a project that we're working on. So remember, you should have your drawn out rural scene. You should make sure that you have details in each one of the background, the middle ground, and the foreground. Um, I know some of you, I told you you should really draw the details out in the foreground because that's where the things are most detailed and where things are going to be the most vivid and bright. Um, but here's something to add to your toolkit, so to speak, as far as art is concerned. When you do watercolors, I want you to think of three different ways, okay? There's, right now we're going to do what's called a wash, and that is where you use a lot of water and a little bit of paint. Now this is good for the background and for your sky. If I was you, I would get all the background stuff done first and then I would work towards the, the front. Um, so get your brush wet. You should use a bigger brush when you're using a doing a wash. If you don't have one at home, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get some blue. And remember, I'm just gonna use a little bit of paint and a lot of water, okay? My brush is pretty wet. And you're gonna do a wash, which is just, this is our sky. Now, when you're doing, when you wanna account for clouds, I'm just gonna ask you to go ahead and just leave that, leave it white. We can always go back in and add some more details to that later. A wash is very light, it's very watery, it's okay to be a little messy with that. The watercolor paper is thicker because it's built it to absorb the water, so it's okay. That's why we don't use regular paper when we're doing a lot of watercolor with waters, with water, I should say, because um, it can't handle the weight of all that water, but watercolor paper can. So it's a perfect tool to use. Okay, so obviously you can see your wash is gonna be light, it's gonna be messy. It's not going to be perfect. I want it to be different shades coming in there. You really don't have a lot of control when you're doing a wash. And that's okay. I don't want you to. I want you to let go of that a little bit. If some of your lines are very dark that you've drawn, you might want to go ahead before you start watercoloring and lighten up with an eraser your lines. Don't erase them all the way, obviously, but you might want to lighten them up a little bit so that when you go to start painting, you could just see the line faintly, but you don't need to have super dark lines for that. Okay. The bigger the brush, the better too, because then you can just make your sky look very realistic. All right, I want my sky to be, and look at that. If you use a lot of water, the wa the paint will spread and that's the look that we're going for. This is why a wash is cool for the sky. I'm gonna make the sky a little darker at the top, kind of like it is in reality, and make it, now notice, as I'm doing this, even though I'm doing a wash and kind of covering that all in, it's not one solid color. You do not want your wash to be one solid color. You want it to be watery, you want it to be a little drippy, that's okay. Um, you want it to have some depth. Um, when you put all these different shades in here, it gives it more depth, it makes it look more real. If you just colored it in like a coloring book, then it doesn't really make give it that realistic feel. It gives it more of a cartoony feel. Okay, so there's a wash. The second part is where it's basically like half and half. So I'm gonna wa I'm gonna I'm going to actually dry this brush off a little bit. On um, this part, you do wet the brush, but you get that paint you you're going to use more paint than you are water this time around so this is good for the the middle ground can you guys see the paint okay so like i'm getting this green nice and wet in here so i still have a lot on my brush okay this is good to come in 
it's almost like a wash, but it's like in the middle. You're not using as much water. You have a little more control. It's a little brighter. I'm gonna go ahead and put our hills in here using this method. See, a little bit more control. So you have more paint on the brush than water. The first one was wash, a lot of water, a little bit of paint. Um, there's also another way of doing this. You can wet the paper and then bring the brush. So here, I'm gonna wet the paper. And then what you could do is get some paint and just kind of let the paint spread through the water. That's called wet on wet. The paint's wet and the paper's wet. And you're just kind of letting the water do the work of filling things in. Okay, that's kind of a neat, neat trick too. Very cool. So, so far with watercolor, you've learned how to do a wash when you get the brush really, really wet and you just use a little bit of paint and you just kind of wash the paper with it. Another is wet on wet where I just dabbed a lot of water on and I just let the paint fill it in. So I'll do it again. And then this third one up here is a little bit of water and a lot of paint. There you go. The biggest thing I want you guys to start thinking about with watercolor is not to be, don't be so controlled with it. It's okay. We're filling in basically the background and middle ground stuff. When we get to the foreground, that's when you're going to switch your technique to include more details, okay? Um, it's okay to paint over stuff a little bit. Like if some of the paint gets on the house, like here, that's okay. Because we're going to go back and use the next technique I'll show you to kind of fill that in. And you won't be able to see. All right, now see, I didn't paint all my hills one solid green. Okay. There's two different greens going on. I'm using a wash. I'm using water on wa wet on wet, which is the water and wet paint. And letting the paint just kind of fill the water in and we use the wash in the sky all right so when you come to the the top i'm going to switch brushes now when you're going to put details in actually you know what let me get this road a little bit using a little bit of a wash for the road because i want to fill that in don't go if you have grass or stuff up here don't go over that with black I'd say what I'm doing right now is kind of a cross between wash and um, the middle where there's a lot more paint on the brush. All right. All right, you guys get the idea. I'm not gonna paint the whole road. What I'm gonna show you next is how to do basically what they call dry so I already have a lot of paint. You need to get it a little wet though, just so there's, there's enough paint on your brush. So the brush was dry and I'm putting just paint on it that's not super saturated, okay? So this is called dry watercolor painting, dry brush. And this is good for when you wanna put in the details. Like if you have grass or you've got corn, I'm gonna just, just a little bit of water. You're gonna use very little water for this. 
and more paint than anything, okay? So this is when you want to put in your details in your foreground. You don't want the brush to be wet, very wet, and you don't want to make the paint wet too wet, just a little bit so it can actually spread, but not enough that it's, see how this is, this was a little wet here, that's okay. This is how you're gonna start putting in your details in the foreground. So you need to, the, the brush should start out dry and you should just use a little bit of water to make sure the paint can flow. But that is what the foreground's gonna be looking like. And then here, let's put some grass over here. Okay, so you're gonna use a wash for the stuff in the background. You're gonna use the middle where you have like half water, half paint on the brush for the hills or whatever you've got going on in the middle ground. And then for the foreground, you're gonna use the dry brush. It's gonna be a thinner brush too because to make those details, you're gonna need a thin brush. You're gonna try all three of these different ways I just showed you. Okay, I want to see evidence of that throughout your paper. Another good place I can use this dry brush technique is when I go to do the barn. Actually, I'm going to give them just a little bit of water. I'm going to wipe that off. Okay. And when you go to do your barn... That's probably too dark since it's in the middle ground. We gotta lighten that up a little bit. By the way, that's a good place for me to stop. If you make a mistake or you need to lighten it up, you can take a paper towel and dab it and look at that. It also kind of creates a, a, a little texture there, which is kind of neat. So don't freak out if you make a mistake. You can always dab it with a paper towel. If you feel uncomfortable using the watercolors right off the bat, what you can do is take one of your practice sheets and play around with it on your practice sheet. If you want a piece of watercolor paper just to practice, come and see me. As a matter of fact, I would recommend that you guys practice a little bit before you start. This way you can feel confident in trying out these three different techniques. Watercolor is not an exact, it's going to be a little messy. You're going to have to get used to it, okay? It's not going to be like filling in things perfectly and things working out exactly the way you want. Sometimes the paint's going to do what it wants. But there's beauty in that. It's okay for things not to be always planned out perfectly. Sometimes art does its own thing. You have this vision, but sometimes the paint decides it wants something else. And that's okay. So I say go with it. So practice a little bit, okay? Get a piece of paper, watercolor paper. Try out these techniques I'm showing you. The wash, the middle, and the dry brush with the details. It's fun. At least I think it is. All right, and even I can even go back always start with the wash and filling the big areas in but then you can always go back and do like the dry brush and put in different you know details like you can make the grass really look like it has depth to it not just a big green patch you can go back and put you know grass corn but if you do that, you've got to wait until the background watercolor part dries. So do the wash, like one day do the wash in class, do the middle, and then go back and do, after it dries for a day, go back and do all the details with the dry brush technique, okay?
Okay, you guys get the idea? I think that you can definitely start experimenting today. Take a practice page, give some of these techniques a try. Um, watercolor is a lot of fun once you get comfortable with it. So get a little comfortable. Um, details are not going to be perfect. Things are going to be a little messy. But the overall effect is very cool looking. And watercolor is very um, expressive looking. It gives things depth instead of just coloring things in a flat color. I think it looks awesome. So you guys give this a try today. Um, if there's questions, find me, email me. I will answer them, okay? Um, I will work on trying to finish this up and I'll show you guys when I'm done with it, okay? Good luck.